In this video, we talk about adding ceilings to your existing Revit project. The project we're using is the residential project that we're building in the past couple of tutorials. And I'm gonna show you all the methods that we can possibly use to add ceilings and how they use differently in the industry. This is the one video that you'll ever need to be able to understand different methods of adding ceilings and the method that best suits you. So you can do this effectively, efficiently, and be very professional in the workplace. Before we get started, I wanna let you know that all my courses are for free on this platform called School. It's the first link in the description. You have beginner courses, advanced courses, as well as walkthroughs in all aspects of Revit, engineering, and career. You can go through all of these courses, and if you have any questions, you can DM me personally. You can have one-on-one -on -one video calls with me, or you can ask the community where I will or someone else in the community will get back to you regarding any questions regarding Revit. So click that link in the description and join my free learning platform. So there's a few ways that people like to add ceilings into their Revit projects. The first way is by just going to your ceiling plans, which is underneath your floor plan section. So ceiling plan, ground floor, level one. Let's open both of them because we need to add ceilings to both of these. I'm going to open my 3D view and pull it to the side so that you can see it at the same time as it's happening. And I'm going to edit this view so we can see as we add our ceilings in. So I recommend doing this so you can actually see what's happening. So we have our ground floor. We have our level one. Let me extend this to the top and let's add our ceilings. So we've gone to our ceiling plan here. And if we go to our ground floor, the first thing we're gonna do is by going to the architecture tab, you can go to the ceiling, right? Let's click this. And there's two options here. You can sketch your ceiling or you can do an automatic ceiling, right? If you do an automatic ceiling, I think it's very easy because if you do automatic ceiling, you don't have to sketch everything around everywhere. You can just do automatic ceiling as you hover over sort of the walls here and you click, you'll see that the ceiling just pops up. But the thing is, this is not completely accurate. So you can actually go around and start to edit um, what this ceiling is gonna look like. So I place the ceiling. Whoops. Okay, so I've placed the ceiling. And I, if you click the ceiling, you can see that it's at a certain level, right? I think this is way too low. So if we, if we click this ceiling, you can increase the height offset from level. So from a ground floor, I want this to be at 3,000 or three meters. It's a really high ceiling, right? If I click OK, then it gets moved up. And if we have more space, right? In this case, we have a pretty high, between the grid lines, we have, it starts at zero and it goes to 4,000. So we can actually afford to have an even higher ceiling. In this case, we'll do 3,300, which is in some places, uh, it'll look really nice inside the house because it's a really high ceiling. So as you can see, the ceiling has been placed automatically. This is good. Let me extend this out. The one thing you'll notice is that it's actually in the, in the way of the staircase. So we're gonna have to edit this ceiling so that on lower level, it doesn't cut into the, into the... into the staircase. So let's extend this so we can actually see our ceiling. And as you can see, in the in this ground level, right, you want to add a ceiling for each addition, uh, unique room that you have. So I've actually gone ahead and I've added the first ceiling. Let's edit this so we can actually place this, not cutting that staircase. So if I double click that ceiling, you go into editing mode, and over here you can go back and you can start to edit what this ceiling is going to look like. So I want to delete these lines. I'm gonna delete everything over here. Delete that, delete that, delete that, because I don't wanna go around the staircase. I want this to be an opening. I'm gonna click this and sort of bring this back here. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna extend this all the way down, right? And I'm gonna attach this to this. And so now this ceiling looks nice. And I probably want to yeah, I want that ceiling to go around that wall, which is which is correct, because the ceiling is not gonna go through a wall, it's gonna stop at the wall. And so you have a nice outline of what you want the ceiling to be. If you click OK, now you have something which is starting to look a bit better, right? So if we cut this section box so we get rid of that wall, you can start to see that this ceiling, as you enter the house, you have a ceiling above you right? 
and you can go up the staircase and it's perfect if you extend this up you can see that above that ceiling there's a ceiling there's a floor slab and then in between those two is called the ceiling space so oops so you have that ceiling and you have that floor slab and then this is going to be the ceiling space in between those two areas what you will realize is um, if you want you can actually increase this ceiling so that it's just sitting below that staircase in that case it'll actually look better but if you want a certain distance between the ceiling and the slab because you want to add services for example we're going to add air terminals later to every single room in here so that we don't have to add a wall mounted air conditioner we have air terminals in the ceiling and we want some pipe work in the ceiling you need some ceiling space so this is the ceiling space in between the ceiling and the slab right what we'll do now is since we've done that we're going to go back here and we're going to add all the ceilings for the rest of the areas so again automatic ceiling click this click this click this Okay, what that's done is actually it's gone ahead and added the ceilings, if we extend this down, to the bathroom, that pantry, and that storage area that we have, right? And sometimes you might not even want to have a ceiling in certain areas. Like for example, in the storage area, there's not going to be anything in the ceiling space because it makes sense to have a ceiling space for the bathroom because we're going to have an exhaust fan here, maybe like a fan inside here. It's going to sit inside the ceiling space. So what you will need is you will need a certain ceiling height or like a ceiling space in here, right? In the pantry, we don't actually need to have a ceiling space in this closet we don't need to have a ceiling space so what you can you can actually do is you can increase this height uh, to 3300 and you can increase this height to 3300 and you can increase this height oops to 3300 what does that keep happening so you click this once increase it to 3300 and since we have a pantry and we have a closet, right, a storage area, we can actually even increase this even higher. So we can even go as close as 3600. And the reason for that is because of what I said before. We can have the ceiling just touching the underside of that slab or, or really close to it because we don't need any ceiling space there. So if you wanted to, you can increase this further up and that's going to increase the vertical height in that storage room. And it's going to make it so that we can have our cupboards inside our pantry, because this is the pantry, you can have them as high as possible. So you have more storage space for the kitchen, right? So what you could do is let's cut a section and I'll show you how to figure that out. So if we cut a section in there, you'll be able to see the slab, the ceiling, and everything. So if you go to your view, you can see this is the ceiling, right? And then this is the other ceiling. So you might want a certain space. This is the bathroom in that ceiling because you want to add a fan in there. So you might want to have half a meter, which is what we have currently, right? So you put a grill here, you can put a fan in there, and that's going to exhaust outwards. But in this case, we can actually extend this ceiling, and we can align this to the underside of that slab. So we just have plasterboard on the ceiling, but this is really high. And then you can add your storage rack inside here, which is really big for the pantry. So you have a lot of space in there, right? So you have to be careful, not careful. You have to be smart about how high your ceilings are because you want to make them as high as possible in areas you don't have anything in the ceiling space. So you can do the same thing. You can go and you can extend this section view down go to the section and you'll see that you can do the same thing here. So you can align this to the underside of that slab. So you have high ceilings in those two areas and then you have high ceilings in the other areas as well because it's around 3300, but you still need some space for your services in the ceiling, right? So once you've done that level, you can continue upwards and we can go to our level one and we're gonna do the same thing architecture, ceiling, automatic ceiling. We're going to click in each of these rooms. This is how easy it is. You just click all of these rooms and it adds these ceilings into here. And it's just automatic. In the storage area, um, so if you 
if you've already placed it, it'll give you a warning and say that it's already placed there. So you want to make sure that you delete one of those ceilings if you accidentally uh, place a ceiling twice. So this is the good thing about doing automatic ceilings. It'll give you a warning if there's an area that you haven't placed a ceiling in or placed it twice. In this case, I've actually forgot to place a ceiling in here. So I'm going to go back to my ceiling command and automatically place a ceiling in there. And what I realized is all of these actually at 2600, which is an issue because I want to make them much higher, right? If you go to your section view, you'll notice that there's absolutely no reason for there to be such a high distance between here and here. There's a whole meter, it doesn't make any sense because we're gonna have a roof on top of this level too, right? So we can actually extend all of these things. The, the way I would like to do this is by, is by right clicking this and going, I'm not gonna do it in this. Okay, so technically what I wanna do is I wanna select all of these ceilings and raise them. I'm gonna raise them to 3300 from the floor level, right? And the easiest way to do that is by right clicking and going select all instances in the view, right? And then changing this height. However, you will see that since my view contains the ceilings on the bottom level, I will also be editing those heights. And I don't want to edit them all to 3300 because I place some higher and I place some lower, right? So the easiest way to do that is just by clicking this and dragging this up, right? So we're we're well in the first floor. And then you can do this again by clicking this, right clicking, select all instances in the view. And now you'll see, okay, everything's at 2600. Now you can change this to 3300. Before it said varies because it was selecting the ones in the lower level and the upper level. And remember how we made it to the underside of the slab in the storage in the pantry. Now we've added, we've removed that from the view. So we can add everything as 3300. And as you move your mouse away, it will raise all the ceilings. Um, you can also do this the opposite way by just before you place a ceiling, right? Architecture, ceiling, you can change this to 3300. I just didn't do that, which is why I had to change it again, right? So you have different ceiling types. You have a grid ceiling, which is like what you'd want to put in an office, or you have a plain ceiling, which is what you most likely have in a house. So these grid ceilings are ceilings which you can put in offices and they have tiles so you can push them up and down. Since we're doing a house, we use this plain ceiling. And so if you look at your section view, now you can see that there's a certain height between here and here. If you put your roof at this level, you have a certain height that you can actually add any services in up the top and you have some storage space for anything in, I don't know what it's called, the attic, no attic is down, but in the, in the, in the ceiling. The opposite of the attic, I'm pretty sure. It is the attic because the basement is underneath and the attic is up the top, yeah. So this is starting to look pretty good now. If we go back to our ground floor, um, what you'll see is that our ceilings are all perfect. You might wanna have higher ceilings in certain levels, in certain areas. In that case, you can actually just click that and you can increase the ceiling. But let me show you an additional thing that some people like to do. Some people like to add ceilings by creating additional views or additional levels, right? So they'll, they'll go to their east elevation and they'll say, okay, you have a ground floor, you have level one, you have level two. What some people will do, let me save this before I do this because I'm not going to save changes after, is they'll copy this grid line and they'll go down here, right? And they'll rename this as as ground floor ceiling okay and there's pros and cons to this and I don't do this because the reason I don't do this is because it becomes very complicated let's say you have 100 levels of it's a skyscraper you have a hundred levels if you have a hundred levels and you put all grids level one level two level three level four and then you have level one ceiling, level two ceiling, level three ceiling, then it becomes very complicated. You have like 200 levels and it's so complicated. You have so many views on the side of side of it. And what that does is when you give this to a subcontractor, the subcontractor starts to copy monitor your grid lines and your levels. There's gonna be so many, it's gonna to be too confusing. So the best practice is to not do this, right? I'm showing you what not to do don't have a ground floor ceiling and usually what people will do is they'll write like 3300 and then this is like your ceiling view and then 
if you have all the ceilings in the project at 3300, then you can place them all here. And then later on, if you just want to move the ceiling up, you can just you can just go up with the ground floor ceiling level and it'll move all of the ceilings with it because it's going to be constrained, right? But in some projects, you want to have ceilings which are higher, you want to have ceilings which are lower, you want to have a lot of floors. So in this case, this doesn't actually work because it starts to add too much complexity to the Revit model where you might have um, ceilings, for example, in the pantry, we had ceilings which were higher than 3300, right? They were just to the underside of the slab. But in the living room, we had 3300. So then it becomes confusing because you have a level and you have ceilings which are at 3300 and then some which are lower, but then the ground floor ceiling level says that it's at 3300. So I don't recommend this, but I'm just letting you know that this is another possibility to have a ground floor ceiling level and make sure if you're doing this, it's a small project and all ceilings at the same height. Otherwise, it'll get very confusing. So for now, I'm just gonna click this and delete it because it's not a good practice. And let's go back to our 3D view and everything's starting to look pretty good now. So the next thing that I will probably start to do is this house is starting to come together. All I need to do is just add some windows and doors to pretty much everything inside the house as well as um, on the facade on the outside of the house, right? Let's look at this finally in realistic view so we can see what we've done here. So that's starting to look really good, right? One additional thing which I did want to say is that the second method of doing this is when you go to architecture and ceiling, instead of automatically sketching, you can just sketch your ceiling and this just opens your sketch plane. And then you can just go like, you can go line or rectangle and you can just sketch the lines from here all the way around, all the way down here. But to be honest, if you're using Revit and it's it's got a smart feature which does automatic ceilings, you might as well use that. The reason you might want to do ceilings like this is I'll tell you when you might want to do this, is if you have like, in some big projects, you have like polygons in the ceiling and they're suspended, right? You might have like a polygon or a circle or a rectangle which is hanging and there's, it's not like a complete ceiling, it's a suspended ceiling. And in, in those cases, you have like a suspended ceiling here, you have another one here and you have another one here and they're suspended to the slab and then you have the services which go over it. So in, in a case like that, you will wanna use, um, you'll wanna use this editing mode of this, auto, not the automatic one, the one where you draw it because you have weird uh, ceilings which are suspended, right? But if you have a ceiling which is uniformly going through the whole project, just like this house does, then you can just do the automatic version. And that's when you would use both of these options, right? That is the end of the video. Hopefully you understand exactly how to add ceilings, how to increase the heights of ceilings, how to use the automatic option versus the sketching option and when you would actually start to use them. You would understand how to keep a certain ceiling space so you have space for ductwork and plumbing work and fans that you want to put inside. You know, you want to put exhaust fan in the bathroom, so you want a ceiling space there. But in the pantry, you don't have an exhaust fan. You don't have an exhaust fan in the storage cupboard, right? So you don't want to have ceiling space for that. You just want to go all the way up to the underside of the slab. This will increase the height you have for certain um, equipment, such as like a storage rack or something, right? So you want to make sure that you keep these things in mind when you're designing a house, when you're an architect, when you're doing things to do with ceilings. It's very simple. 